Welcome, everybody. It's Friday, March 29th. John Arvosa is here at the Arvosa's Report, coming to you live from Washington, D.C., my very sunny room. That's okay at the moment, but annoying me with the light because <laughs> I'm needing my light even broke, my light even brighter now, but it's okay. Uh, anyway, let me get TikTok rolling here. Go live. All right. Yeah, it feels like there's a filter on TikTok or something. I don't know. It looks like that's, I'm seeing filter on TikTok, but oh God, who knows? Who knows? TikTok, you drive me bonkers. Let me see here if there's a crazy filter on or something. TikTok, enhance something. Oh yeah, something's something weird is going on. Okay, that was something. I don't know. I still feel like there's a goth. Hey, hey, TikTokers. I feel like there's some kind of goth filter or something they've got on for me here. I don't know. Okay, it's not this stuff. No. Maybe it's normal what's on. Okay. I don't know. Just felt like there was some weird filter on today, but maybe I'm the light is funny or whatever. It's just kind of this weird contrast that's going on on TikTok. Anyway. Hey guys. Hey everybody. I'm going to forget about it, but it still seems weird to me. It's better than having the um, spinning panda on my nose or whatever that was a few months ago that we couldn't get rid of. That was fun. Uh, anyway. Hey guys. So welcome everybody. John Arvos is here. Arvosis Report coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Uh, this is my show I do every Monday to Friday, six o'clock Eastern time U.S. Thank you. Happy Friday, Dawn. Thank you for that. And thank you for the, uh, the hearts from John S., uh, this is my show we do every Friday, uh, every Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern Time U.S., talking about the latest news from Ukraine. So welcome all. Thank you incredibly. Um, yeah, so anyway, hey, Gamma, thank you for that. <laughs> I look CGI. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not, but thank you. I, or I don't even know which way that cuts, actually. Thank you, Crystal. Sun glaring, maybe. It may, the sun maybe is affecting it somehow. It's not quite making sense to me. I still feel like there's a filter on that's increasing the contrast but I can't figure out where it is. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Jorge. Um, it's okay. I'll survive, but it just looks different to me. So anyway, exactly. My hair is on point and that's all that matters. So welcome guys. There is a lot of news today. Um, and a lot. There's an okay amount of news. I'd say there's important news though. Thank you, Nikki or nickel. I should say for the hat and mustache, lamb chop, Olga, lots of gifts coming in. Thank you guys. You know, I appreciate those. Um, Anyway, ooh, a little sip of water, and then we'll get rolling, guys. Mm-mm-mm. Ah, yes, eclipse in my own room. Um, is everything working fine or what? I see people still complaining. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, D Diabete. Uh, Marie as well. So on TikTok, are you guys getting, uh, you're getting okay uh, visuals? Thank you, Sexeed. A couple of people were complaining. I'm assuming it's working for everybody else. And YouTube, I'm assuming you guys are always doing okay. Working for you, Big Hawk? Okay. All right. Good enough then. All right. As always, if it's not working, it usually... <laughs> Thank you, Succeed. If it's not using... If it's not working, it's usually a problem of having to leave and come back on your end. Thank you, Joe. Susan, very sweet of you. I appreciate that. Yep, she is uh, currently in her bed below my chair. I did not put water out for her, so we'll have to deal with that in an hour, but that's fine. I forgot. Thank you, Crystals. Actually, I'd put some water out for her right before the show, but she drank it. So, you know, you know. Anyway, guys. All right. I am ready to get rolling here. Um, what has the most interesting news article you have covered? I'm not sure what you mean, Michael. I'm not sure what that means. Sorry, but you mean what's the most interesting story in two years of covering Ukraine? I'm actually not sure. Um, but uh, anyway... Uh, let me get rolling, guys. So uh, today is day 764 of Vladimir Putin's special military operation in Ukraine. Thank you, Aviation and Alex and Crystals for the gifts on TikTok. Uh, as you guys know, I very much appreciate your gifts because I do this full time. Uh, and in order to afford doing this, I basically hit you guys up for gifts <laughs> and subscriptions. So, and you've been very generous. So thank you for that uh, to help me pay my bills. Please do keep the gifts and subscriptions coming. Um, we actually subscribers, especially or memberships on YouTube. It's called memberships on TikTok. They're called subscriptions. But basically, you can sign up for a, a month at a time to uh, or it's a monthly subscription to support my work. Uh, you get serve special emojis on both of the services. But also, most importantly, I think you get to join our Saturday show. I, a long time ago, decided to start doing a show on Saturday as well as a thank you for the monthly subscribers. So I am doing a show tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. for you TikTokers on TikTok. For the YouTubers, I will be on YouTube. I will also be at Discord. Um, the Discord is available for 
the, not the TikTokers, because it's broken, the link from TikTok to Discord, unfortunately, but for YouTube, Kofi, Twitch, uh, and Discord, any of you guys can watch on Discord as long as you connect your accounts. Otherwise, for YouTube, frankly, it's probably easier just to watch on YouTube. I finally was able to figure it out last week. Uh, and I got it to work. Thank you, Big Hawk, for renewing your subscription today. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, if you guys can subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Chazak and Frank for the roses. Um, one neat thing too, which we only discovered recently and you guys told me about, you can buy gifts for other people in the show. So um, it comes out randomly. The computer, you know, the algorithm decides who it goes to, but you can buy, you know, one, two, three, four, five subscriptions It'll only go for one month, so it won't happen more than one month, but you'll be able to basically buy it, thank you, Jetta, and it'll automatically uh, give it to people, which is kind of cool. And again, nice way to help me, which is great, but it also allows them to do our weekend show and everything else, so. Anyway, all right, that's enough of that pitch. Thank you, Nicolate, again. Thank you, D. thank you, Joyce. Um, Poppy's listening but driving. Okay, I was just gonna say, don't, you know, don't do anything crazy while driving, of course. Uh, so let me get rolling. So. Um, Overnight, uh, according to the Telegraph, thank you, Adventures, thank you, Crystals. Um, overnight, Russia launched one of its biggest missile and drone attacks on Ukraine. Um, Julia, Julia was with us last night. Um, Ukrainian, uh, uh, <laughs> I never know what to call Julia. Ukrainian TikToker, we'll call her, but she also has a YouTube show. Um, very smart up-to-date on all the politics woman, a Ukrainian. Thank you, Adventures, and thank you, Rob, uh, Robert, of course. Thank you for that, the dinos. Uh, and thank you, Joyce, for the corn. Um, but Yulia was with us, and she was warning that a big attack was coming in, and she was right, um, because basically they can tell when a lot of the Russian bombers go in the sky over Russia. They're like 300 miles away or something over the Caspian Sea, places like that. They know that they're getting ready to launch bombs at Ukraine, and in fact, the Russians did. Thank you, Jetta. They... Um, they launched 60 drones, 39 missiles at various targets of cities. Uh, they went after electrical infrastructure a lot again. Uh, thank you, Joyce and Matt, for the gifts there. Um, the Russians have been, as you guys know, ever since the war started, going after Ukraine's electrical infrastructure, especially during the winter. Uh, they're trying to pretty much freeze the Ukrainians out. Um, and uh, they're doing it again. And they've been doing it all winter. Ukraine has been retaliating by going after... Um, going after... Uh, Russia's oil refineries, which also affects Russia's energy, but a little differently though, because Ukraine is going after something that actually affects the Russian military. Russia is going after civilian energy. They're trying to, well, I mean, from the beginning of the war, the defense experts told us that Russia has a history of basically targeting civilians. Thank you, Blue Ariel. Um, it is well established in military circles that this is part of Russian military doctrine, that they target civilians and they target them on purpose. And it's a point I always, thank you, not, not Canadian, thank you, Running and Blue Ariel. It's a point that I always sort of try to emphasize with you guys because a lot of, I think, sort of civilians who don't do defense or foreign policy don't really understand that just because civilians die in warfare doesn't mean it's okay to target civilians in warfare. There's a difference in terms of morals and ethics and also international law. If civilians just happen to die, that is not necessarily a crime. Thank you, Simon. Uh, and thank you, Joyce. If you target civilians with the intent of harming or killing them, that's a war crime. It is totally different than saying, well, in this conflict, civilians are dying too. Uh-uh. You've got to basically intentionally or negligently, negligent works as well as being a crime. In other words, that you just don't care how many civilians you kill. In any case, Russia's military doctrine, the defense experts will tell you, has always calculated um, uh, attacking civilians as part of the goal. Uh, that basically trying to make the, the, the government crumble by putting so much pressure on the civilians. So that's why Russia has been attacking uh, Ukraine's energy. Thank you, Running. A um, little more here. Oh, so one of the, I, I would call this the big story of the day. Um, a little annoying, actually, but big story of the day. Actually, Goose, Israel and uh, the Palestinians are both doing it. Israel, and the, you know, Israel, I, I, would, I would argue Israel is possibly being negligent by going after the Palestinians in Gaza. Um, but the Palestinians also, you know, have been killing Israelis and everybody else, civilians around the world for 75 years. So um, let's just be clear about that. Anybody who wants to bring up Israel, let's talk about the Palestinians too, because they've been killing civilians for 75 years. Um, so nothing happens in a vacuum. You know, 
You're not going to get me to, to on that stuff. So thank you, Larissa. So in any case, let's move on. Um, big, st- I would say the biggest story today, <clears throat> Defense One, which is a big military publication here in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Crystals. Thank you, Christopher. Um, is reporting that the U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who is our top military official, thank you incredibly, our top, uh, our top uniformed military official, that he said in an interview that the U.S. is reconsidering sending long-range attackums to Ukraine. Now, this is very interesting. Thank you, Christopher. Multiple gifts there. Incredibly tired. And col- uh, Colon and Kangaroo and Christopher again. Thank you, guys. And LWD. Um, and and Ava. We got all the gifts coming on TikTok today. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, so the top American general said in an interview today that the U.S. is rethinking whether to send long-range attackums missiles to Ukraine. This is a big deal. Um, Ukraine has been wanting these forever. The U.S. has been refusing to send them forever. Defense experts have been saying that it is crucial for the U.S. to send these weapons, these long-range missiles, to Ukraine. And Biden has refused all along because many of us felt Biden was afraid of Putin. And this article confirms that fact. Um, You know, There was a lot of rumor going around as to whether the U.S. didn't have enough systems, and that was part of the concern, allegedly. But what this article confirms is that Biden was actually afraid of Putin, which is incredibly frustrating to me. Um, I'm going to read you some from this uh, this article. Uh, Yeah, I just, I'm going to read you some from the article, and then we're going to talk about it. Because I just, uh, actually, let me step back a second, too. A little bit more on attackums. So attackums are missiles that can be fired from the HIMARS system. The HIMARS, right, the sort of famous weapon system we gave the Ukrainians. It's kind of a truck that can shoot missiles so they can scoot and shoot, as it's called. They can, like, drive up somewhere, shoot, and then drive away before the Russians are able to locate them and fire back. So it's a very nice system in that regard. Um, You can fire lots of different kinds of missiles with the HIMARS. The U.S. decided to give these hundred range, first of all, we gave missiles that could only go like 60 miles. Then we gave missiles, these attackums that could go 100 miles. These were older attackums that we were getting rid of, and they only went 100 miles, which is what, 100 and, I always forget, 150,000, maybe 160,000 kilometers, something like that, 100, excuse me, 160 kilometers, something like that. Well, what the Ukrainians wanted, and defense experts said they should get, are the attackums that go 190 miles, which is more like you know, 300 kilometers, something like that. Uh, Thank you, Kangaroo. Well, Biden was refusing. Let me read you a little bit more from this article now, which frankly backs up everything that I've been saying about Biden, by the way. Um, So the chairman of the Joint Chiefs told reporters the risk of escalation is not as high as maybe it was at the beginning. Thank you, Simon. Um, Thank you, Kangaroo and Benny and Christine. It is romper room here, I swear. Um, And Simon again. The... um, The premise here from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs is that we were afraid that it would be perceived as escalation. I said this. It would be perceived as escalation and Russia would get angry. And who knows what Russia would do if they got angry so that we didn't want to anger Russia by giving Ukraine the weapons it needed. Okay, from the beginning. But now somehow that's magically changed. Let's move on. Russia, this is from the article. This is is the part that blows my mind. Again, it confirms everything I've been saying, and I read this and go, you have got to be kidding me. Listen to the argument as to why, and this this was clearly slipped by U.S. officials. It's written by by the reporter, and I've been a reporter as well. I mean, I wrote for The Economist, among others. To me, clearly, this is something that American officials told this reporter, but said you can't attribute it to us. So the reporter is stating it as fact without giving a source because they got it from the Americans. Listen to this from Biden administration. Russian statements in September 2022 indicated that providing such weapons to Ukraine, the long range attackums, would cross a red line because their range would allow Ukraine to target Moscow, right? So the Americans were afraid, oh my God, what if the Ukrainians go after Moscow and the Russians said it's a red line? Next paragraph. Top military officials, speaking on background, they mean American military officials, have pointed to Russian military doctrine specifically as it relates to so-called existential risk, saying that giving Ukraine such weapons could compel a nuclear response from Russia or spur it to attack a NATO partner. The Biden administration is saying they were afraid that giving Ukraine these longer range weapons would cause a nuclear war. Guys, this is a bunch of hooey, especially because Biden has still not said 
that he's going to give Ukraine these weapons. There, there's a remember there's an additional uh, amount of money, small amount available that Biden can actually give Ukraine. We, the U.S. Defense Department found it, basically. And uh, they're considering giving these more of these shorter range attackums, not the good ones Ukraine needs. So there is the money to probably send these attackums if Ukraine you know, can get them. Th these guys are saying that up until now, it has not been safe to send the attackums because there'd be a nuclear war or, or Russia would attack a NATO country. Again, we're going to talk about this. Fat chance. Fat chance that would happen. Because we sent weapons to Ukraine that could go 200 miles. Now, the, the attackums can go officially 190 miles, the longer range, not the ones we gave them. The ones we gave them can only go 100 miles. The ones they want can go 190 miles. Now, they can probably go farther, but officially that's the distance. You know how long, how far, I wish Callum were with us. He could tell us the exact number. But the British and French cruise missiles go farther than that. They go at least that distance. I believe they go farther. I want to say the British and French cruise missiles, do they not go, well, do we know, that, okay, let me rephrase this. There are varying uh, distances that those missiles can go. Do we know the exact um, distance that the ones we gave the Ukrainians can go? I don't think Callum's with us, is he? I'm going to ping him in case he isn't um, because I'm curious about this. But I will guarantee you at the very least, they go 200 miles. Yeah, Alexa is not going to help us on this one. Um, where are you? Have an attackums question. What distance can UK and French uh, scalp? And oh my God, I'm forgetting the British and the British missile is the Storm Shadow. The ones we gave Ukraine. All right, let's see if he's around. Um, I don't think he's with us today. Usually I notice Callum being here when he's with us. Oh, let me pull this up. Where is this? Oops. There it is. Um, I'm going to go with 200 to 300 miles. I'm going to go two to 300 miles in terms of the distance of what the British ones were. Um, I'm going to invite Yulia again someday, but not today. We just had her on for like half 45 minutes yesterday. <laughs> I mean, you know, happy to have her back, but we're not going to have guests every day. Um, the point is, thank you, Just. If giving Ukraine these weapons will cause a nuclear war or Russia to invade NATO, thank you, Just. Why would the French and the British weapons not have caused the same thing? Right? Second point, Moscow, I'm pretty sure of this. Somebody, you, some Ukrainian out there help me. Isn't Moscow a little farther than 200 miles from the Ukrainian border? I mean, I, I, I'm trying, I don't have my, I don't have my Google Maps with me. How far is Moscow? There's Callum. Okay, 300 miles officially. Okay, so the first point is, the British missiles that they gave to the Ukrainians go 300 miles. But the Biden administration is saying until today that it's too dangerous for us to send missiles that can go 200 miles because that would cause a nuclear war. But the Brits already sent missiles that go 300 miles. So how is sending missiles that go 300 miles not causing nuclear war and not causing an invasion of NATO, but sending missiles that are, can only go 200 miles, one third less distance, will so freak out the Russians because of how far it can go. Okay, guys? This is absolute BS. Absolute BS. Absolute BS from the Biden administration. And again, this is why I'm saying, and unfortunately, you know, I'm smart about this stuff. <laughs> this is why I'm saying that this kind of stuff drives me crazy. That absolutely drives me crazy. Um, it, because they're, they're putting arguments out there that are garbage, that are BS, and they're lying. And I don't know what is motivating the Biden administration, but, but to say, I'm going to read, wait, I've got a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this. Um, they claimed that it would be an existential risk to Moscow if, if we had, oh, I'm getting a lot of reflection here, but it's okay, we'll survive, that it would be an existential risk to Moscow and to the Russians if we gave these missiles. Existential means the existence of Russia would be at stake if we gave these missiles to Ukraine. How does that work exactly? How does giving Ukraine a missile that goes 200 miles put Russia's very existence at risk? How does that, how, how exactly, I mean, again, I, would, I wish I could talk to an administration official and say, ex walk me through how Ukraine is going to threaten Russia's continued existence. Thank you, Mark. By giving them a missile that goes 200 miles that not only can't only reach, that can't reach Moscow, but it's a conventional missile. It's not like this missile does anything special, right? It's, it's not a nuclear missile. 
How is it going to threaten Moscow's Russia's existence? It doesn't. What they're talking about, and again, I have said this before, I do not trust people that make arguments that are basically based on lies. Because when you're making an argument based on a lie, it means there's something else going on and you're not telling me what's going on, right? But clearly the Biden administration argument for not giving these weapons to Ukraine is a lie. It is not based on the distance they go because the British and the French weapons go farther. It is not based as they just claimed in this article that on the fact that, that this weapon system would put Russia's very existence at risk. That's ridiculous. Again, a, a nuclear weapon would, yeah. But a conventional missile that goes 200 miles? That does not put Russia's very existence at risk. Russia, by the way, Russia has, thank you, Bryce, Russia's nuclear policy is, I forget, there's four tenets of the nuclear policy. And one of them is if Russia faces an existential threat. That's what this article is referring to, which means if Russia's very existence were threatened, right? Whether, uh, whether the U.S. launches a missile, uh, uh, a nuclear attack on Russia, that's one of the categories, actually, where Russia says it would fight back. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Crystals. Thank you, Thinky and Grace. One of the other ones is, what if we, America invades Russia and we invade with conventional forces, right? With just our, our army. And our army is able to get within a mile of Moscow and we're at risk of taking Moscow. And if we take Moscow, you could see how this whole scenario is crazy, but the whole Russia would fall to the Americans. That would be an existential threat to Russia where they might use nuclear weapons by their policy. That's what they mean by an existential threat. They don't mean you get weapons, that to, missiles that go 200 miles, <laughs> when the Brits have already given missiles that go 300 miles. They're lying, guys. The Biden administration is lying about this. Um, that's why I read this stuff, and it really ticks me off. Um, oh, so listen to this, too. Let's listen to this, too, if we're going to talk about how naive Biden administration is. This quote from the article, too. Since the fall, reports have suggested the United States may have changed its calculation on providing the weapons to Ukraine. Um, um, oh, here we go. Brown, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs explains why it is we're now thinking maybe it's not as risky to send these missiles today. He said... Um, Russia's muted response to a series of recent Ukrainian drone attacks well inside of Russian territory have allowed the Pentagon to adjust its analysis of the risk of sending attackums. So they're saying because the Ukrainians sent drone attacks far within Russia and the Russians didn't respond in any big way, that made the Pentagon go, oh my God, maybe Russia wouldn't use nukes in response to an attack deep inside their territory. The problem is those attacks have been happening for a very long time. Ukraine has been doing these crazy drone strikes. Remember last fall when they attacked that airport that's near Estonia in the north? Um, Ukraine attacked an airport that's like way up here. Um, they've attacked airports like way over here. Hell, they've been attacking stuff in the Russian, like in the Russian Far East. Just drives me crazy. Absolutely crazy, guys. We are not being told the truth. So final point here. When I hear the Biden administration try to get credit for saying, oh, we've reassessed and no longer does it seem so dangerous to provide Ukraine these weapons that only go 200 miles, I do not get excited and happy for Ukraine. I am hearing the same lies, the same poor analysis that have come out of the Biden administration before, and it worries me because I feel like they're going to do it next time and next time. And if there is a next time, because let's face it, USAID is no longer going to Ukraine, but they're going to keep doing this as time goes on. They're going to keep coming up with goofy excuses to basically blink in the face of Vladimir Putin's threats. Incredible, just incredible. Um, I do echo, I, inter I interact with the comments once this part of the show is over, but I have many pages of notes that we go through first of the stories and then... After that, the second half of the show, I respond to you guys. I read the questions, but it's very hard to do it at this part of the show. There's just too much. There's too much going on. There's just too much going on. So if I see a question that particularly seems related, I'll get into it. Um, but, but you know, and you know what? You're allowed to disagree. No, Mikey, you're allowed to, or not Mikey. Somebody else was saying, hey, John, you're allowed to disagree, but I'd ask you to prove it. You know, thank you, Mouth the Mechanic, because I've been saying this from the beginning of the war. And the information keeps coming out, backing me up again and again and again and again. That, and I said from the beginning, I hope I sound like CNN. Thank you, very crazy. Um, considering CNN is one of the best news outlets in the world, I would be proud to sound like CNN. 
And if you don't believe that, unfortunately, you've been fed a lot of propaganda, and I am not a fan of propaganda. I believe in the truth. So yeah, CNN is great. They're one of the best, best news outlets in the world. Um, again, truth matters. Facts matter. All right, let's move on here. Um, well, remember that plane we talked about yesterday? The Russian plane, which now we know is an Su-27. Of, of, I always forget, is the Su-27 a fighter? I think it's a fighter. It might be a fighter bomber, but it's a fighter. It's a smaller plane that, that fell out of the sky uh, over southern Crimea, over Sevastopol, or near Sevastopol. This plane, b- amazing video of it, on fire, falling out of the sky, looked like it was hit by something because it's on fire, falls into the water, and as it hits the water, explodes, explodes. Well, the Ukrainians said today that they have evidence that the Russians shot down their own plane, that that's what happened. Is that amazing? Um, so this is not the first time this would have happened, but it's very embarrassing for Russia. This is a $126 million plane. Uh, and remember, euros and dollars are pretty close. So that could be, I don't know, 115 million euros, maybe something like that, uh, that the Russians shot down of their own plane. It's, it's bad, um, just very bad. A little bit of an artillery shell update. As you know, uh, the Czech government has been putting together a coalition to buy artillery shells for Ukraine. And the Czech initiative is already being organized, according to uh, Polish Foreign Minister Sikorsky. He basically says that the Czechs are already getting the shells. We knew this actually already. This was confirmed yesterday when uh, we were given the news that that the Czechs have already put in an order for a million artillery shells, which is amazing. Uh, so that's great news for Ukraine, of course. Um, Belgium, Belgium approved its 25th assistance package for Ukraine. Thank you, Doggy Day, for the bunny ears. Belgium approved its 25th assistance package for Ukraine, including 100 million euros, which is $107 million, for F-16 service through the International Fighter Jet Coalition. So basically, they are already putting money up front to help uh, service and take care of the F-16s that we hope Ukraine is getting in the next few months. We shall see. Uh, Midsummer was the latest information we heard about when they should be getting these. Um, which, oh, I would say different Vlad. My Vlad isn't with us, is he? I see somebody saying, hey, Vlad, been a while. I'm assuming it's not our Vlad. My, my yeah, it's, oh, different Vlad. Oh, the real Vlad Putin, that one, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant my Vlad down in, uh, in Southern Ukraine. That's funny, or Southwestern Ukraine. Uh, guys, just a quick reminder as we go on with the show, uh, please keep the gifts coming. I do this full time. I need your support uh, to basically pay the bills. So please, I appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jane, for the heart. Running for the rose. Kangaroo for the TGIF. Um, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And don't forget the uh, subscriptions. I love subscriptions. It's a great way to help me out. Um, they're basically basically monthly, basically, basically monthly memberships that you can provide a gift to me every month automatically. It's not a really big amount. If you, can, if you can't afford it, it's okay. But if you can't afford it, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Tom, for the hat. Fred, Misty, user, um, who's that? Shamrock, Martin. Thank you, guys. Um, but you can check it out on TikTok. I think there's a button. Somebody can tell you. There's some button at the top or the bottom of the screen. I'm looking here to see. I don't even know where it is um, that you can click to check out the subscriptions, the monthly subscription. And on YouTube, uh, you can hit the dollar sign near the comment box, I believe, which should give you one option is memberships as well. And Jens, thank you. Jens just gave, oh, that's nice. Jens just gave a one month membership that Evie got. Oh, that's or Eve got. That's nice. Excellent. Thanks, Jens. And congratulations, Eve. Join us for tomorrow's show on, uh, on YouTube, if you would. Woo. All right, guys. Thank you, Zoe, for the tiny diny. And thank you, Jackie, for the bunny ears. Appreciate that. Um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Tatu. Uh, the U- I'm not sure what your question really means. The U.S. has helped Ukraine a lot. Um, the Europeans have now given about twice as much to Ukraine as the Americans. So it is no longer true that America has given more than Europe. Um, when you look at it, what's interesting is if you look at it as the total amount given per country, the U.S. has given the most. Thank you, Magical. If you look at it as the total amount given per country based on the size of the country, based on the population, which is a a a little more of a legitimate way of looking at it because, for example, America has 330 million people. It's a little easy for America to give a billion dollars than, or, or $30 billion than it is Italy, which I'm guessing Italy has 60 million maybe? Alexa, what's the population of Italy? Let's see. 
he gets confused when I do that fast. Alexa, what's the population of Italy? Oh, come on. Alexa, what is the population of Italy? Okay. Oh, I was close on that one. 58 million. So 58 million, we've got 330 million. It's not fair to say a country that's five times bigger or six times bigger almost, you know, should be giving the same amount, right? When you look at it that way, the U.S. is down. Well, we were down like 13th on the list. We're probably much lower now. Um, Poland was at the top of the list. Um, Estonia, actually Estonia, I think, was at the very top of the list. Like the Baltic countries were there. The Poles were there. Um, the Scandinavian countries were up there. Several of them were up there. The U.S. was not. So I just wasn't sure which way your question was really going, but the U.S. has given a lot, but we haven't given enough. And frankly, we, we, we've been sort of hedging our bets too. Thank you, Crazy. Your Alexa answered. Well, hopefully you got the answer before I did. Um, we have not been giving them everything they needed, which we know, which I've talked about. Um, we've been giving them basically the weapons too late and not enough. Uh, a little bit more here. Um, it's been, oh yeah, this is where we today, I believe, today or yesterday is the one-year anniversary of Russia kidnapping Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. Um, thank you, Mikey, two, two, two toes for subscribing. Join us tomorrow. We've got our, um, our show tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. on TikTok that I do for the monthly subscribers, uh, for you folks, basically. It's just for you guys. And we do the same thing on YouTube for all the YouTube subscribers. Discord, Kofi, Twitch, etc. Um, make sure to join us. So TikTok, join us there. YouTube, join us on YouTube. 11 a.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Please, it's it's fun. It's a nice hang. Vlad often joins us from Ukraine if he's able to. Last week, he literally got back to me and said, "I wasn't able to join the show because we were we were having an air raid and we had to go hide." And I was like, "Okay, you're excused." <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously it's okay. Um, but, you know, Vlad is still in Kharkiv. Um, so, yes, it's been the one-year anniversary since the Russians kidnapped the Wall Street Journal reporter, Evan Gershkovich. Um, literally, his crime was committing journalism. Um, the Russians jailed journalists. Um, under Putin's government, the Russians have actually killed journalists. There was a reporter shot in the head back in 2006. Really horrific story. Um, and we know about Putin killing political opponents and others as well. Uh, but yeah, they, they arrest reporters and they arrested the Wall Street Journal reporter a, mo a year ago. And basically what the Russians do, part of it is a psychological game, which we know Putin as a former KGB colonel very much likes to play the psychological game. But part of it is they grab these hostages in order to trade them for s convicted spies. Um, what's her name? Um, Brittany Griner, who was the female basketball star, American, who was arrested by the Russians they ended up having to trade her for a Russian, like, super arms dealer. What was he called? The Merchant of Death or something? Some horrific name for this guy. Thank you, Fred. Um, responsible for selling arms to terrorists. I mean, very, very bad guy. Thank you again, Ed. That's very generous of you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's, yeah, in any case, very bad. Uh, Romania says it found possible drone fragments on its territory from a Russian attack on Ukraine. Um... Putin, oh yeah, so listen to this. So Putin acknowledged today, or, oh, on Monday, actually. Is this earlier this week? Oh, he did. I thought this was today. Okay. Putin, well, okay, so earlier this week, Putin did say the red, oh, you know what? I'm going to skip that story. That was an old story that somehow cropped up. Um, oh, final story I'll talk about is Taiwan's foreign minister. This was interesting. I don't want to over, you know, anger our overlords with this one, but we'll see. But, um... Taiwan's foreign minister warned about the importance of winning in Ukraine. And listen to this, two paragraphs. When people ask us whether it is okay for the United States to abandon Ukraine, the answer is no, because the world is operating not in a black and white way or if you only look at one theater at a time. The world is interconnected. Um, he says, if the United States abandons Ukraine, China will take it as a hint that if it can keep up sustained action against Taiwan, the United States is going to back off. The United States and its allies are going to back off. The thinking among Chinese officials would be this, he said. Okay, since Russia could do that, we can do it as well. So meaning, and I've been saying this, but very scary to hear it from the, Chinese, uh, the Taiwanese foreign minister, saying that basically by America 
cutting and running from Ukraine, which we have. Uh, Donald Trump demanded that MAGA Republicans in Congress cut all USAID to Ukraine, and they did at his request. Um, by that happening, it is sending China the message that America will not be in the fight for the long haul if they invade Taiwan, which uh, U.S. officials have said there is a very serious concern about Taiwan, uh, Russia, pos excuse me, China possibly invading Taiwan as early as four years from now. So very scary, the message we're sending. Also, and I've said this before, when President Biden makes comments like he has done about Russia, where he says that we can't afford to get into a war with Russia because they are a nuclear country, Biden has said. And if they're a nuclear country, that means World War III if we get into a war with them. I have said, well, the same logic applies to China. China's a nuclear country, so I guess we can't afford to get into a war with China either. So what are we going to do if Taiwan gets invaded? Are we going to, I'm telling you guys right here, we're going to do exactly what we're doing in Ukraine. Biden is going to be half defending Taiwan and half afraid of the Chinese nuclear weapons and half afraid of the Russians because all we need is for the Russians to say, America, if you send this missile system to Taiwan, you'll be crossing a red line and we'll get mad. And I guarantee you, Biden will crumble. Um, I mean, I just hate to say it because the alternative is, you know, the other guy who's worse in every way. But on something like this, I think Biden will do the exact same thing on, on Taiwan that he's done on Ukraine. So we'll see. But all right, that is it for the news today. Um, as always, let me show you a couple of the auction items. Really, our top auction item. This has been um, this has been like super popular today. Oh, looking at this, I gotta clean it up. This has been super popular in our auction. We've got a Ukrainian mug that Vlad got in Ukraine. It's got uh, the Ukrainian coat of arms that's unofficial. I googled it. It's a coat of arms that's used a lot. It's even in the presidential residence, but it's not the real one, but it's one that's used in popular culture. The back of it says Ukraina, Ukraine. Anyway, it's a very pretty mug. I like the color, but we're auctioning that off. Um, we've got a really cool, I showed you guys this last time. It's a really cool um, Ukrainian, I'm not sure what to call this. I don't know if these are called doilies or what. Basically, um, Vlad got this in a little village near him in Ushorod. Uh, the village is what is it, Vino, Vinogra, Vinogradiv or something like that. It's a little village near uh, near Vlad, and he said uh, it's made in the. Uh, he was told it's been made in the 1950s or 60s, so it's antique from Ukraine. Um, beautiful. I think you guys told me it's needlepoint, so you can see sort of beautifully done, and. Uh, and I like the, actually, I like the design because the design is very much, to me, the design is very much the same design you see on the Ukrainian Vishivankas, right? The men's and the women's, uh, the men's outfit in particular, the men's shirt. Cross-stitch, you'd call this? Okay. The cross-stitch. Um, in any case, these, Vlad said, are used at the holidays. They would use them at Easter, for example, and other holidays um, to put on the table, to put a much, you know, a, a nice bowl on top of it or flowers or whatever, but that they're, he also said, by the way, that they're, they would be used as, um, as napkins, which is interesting because I could see that they could be used as napkins. By the way, um, Ramzan is a Russian troll. I have to show you this. Ramzan jump. I am showing you and describing a stitched piece of material. Ramzan, the Russian troll jumps in and goes, you're lying. You, you lie a lot. Guys, he's telling me I'm lying about describing a cross-stitch piece of material from Ukraine in the 1960s. Remember how I told you how basically the Russian trolls are given talking points. They're given like a list of things to say, but they don't really speak English, so they don't really know what to say. They just pop in and say stuff, right? Um, but it always cracks me up because I've told you this. The one thing to look for is when they say you're lying because they always say you're lying at like the wrong time. Remember I told you this? This is what I mean. Like I'm describing a piece of fabric. You're saying I'm lying about a Ukrainian decorative napkin? <laughs> really? Is that what I'm lying about? Really? <laughs> I mean, no, but this is why I'm telling you. Like it's hilarious. They, they crack me up at how bad they are. But... You know, they think if they come into enough into enough lives and do this, somehow it'll it'll you know freak out people or I don't know what. I find it funny because I think it just proves it proves to you who they really are. Anyway, so this is really cool. Um, I will show you. I will show. You. Now, this one has not get any bids yet. I will tell you. I'm surprised. I think this is incredibly cool. This is the cover to like one of the circuit the electronics area of a Ukrainian MiG fighter jet, a MiG-29. Now, 
this MiG was um, was actually shot down over Ukraine. We believe it was a friendly fire incident, which obviously is not a good thing. But I think it's really, but we know all about the plane. We know it was one of the, um, I've got the information in the auction, but I forget what it's called. It's one of the, uh, like the Blue Angels kind of thing of Ukraine. We even narrowed it down to, there were about six planes that we know it was one of. But I just think it's really cool, like as a piece of history and also like to go on a wall or something. But nobody's bidding on it. So I'm just telling you guys, you don't have to, but I think this stuff is incredibly cool. And uh, there's a lot of other stuff. The final one I'll show you is, actually, I'll show you the military patch because I think the military patches are cool too. Um, this is a official Ukrainian military, a real Ukrainian military patch. These are interesting because it's the Ukrainian flag and the Ukrainian trident, but the color's wrong, right? The color's brown. We all know the Ukrainian flag is blue and gold or blue and yellow. Well, I was asking the military folks about this. Um, um, and basically, they make this so that you're not a target. Because if you're in the bushes, for example, right, or at night, and you're wearing something that's bright yellow and bright, bright, bright blue, that's going to stand out. This is going to blend in. Exactly. It's not as noticeable. Blue Ariel just said low visibility. So that's why, because at first I was like, at first I was like, why is the color wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you will see a lot of them wearing these kind of, basically they're for camouflage, right? Things like that, exactly. So this is a, a Ukrainian military, one of the more popular designs, actually. I would say this is, this is probably the second most popular design after the Ukrainian flag itself. The Ukrainian flag is the number one, number one. We have the same patches in our military. Oh, that's interesting, Ash. So lots of other stuff. I've got some Ukrainian candy that Vlad bought that we're auctioning off uh, like five different candy bars just for fun. He bought five of his favorite candy bars. Lots of cool stuff. Um, basically, it is all over on Discord. Uh, go check it out. It's in our Discord community. You'll find the auctions. Uh, for you guys on TikTok, just go to my profile. Look for the link in my profile. You'll see the, tri the red triangles pointing at the link. Click it, and it'll bring up a page with all of my links. One of those links is Discord. For you guys, you can go to aravosis.com right there on the screen, and that will bring up the same page of links. So check it out. All right, um, let's go. Who's supplying me stuff? I'm buying it, Vlad's buying it. Vlad buys a lot of it, my friend Vlad in Ukraine. The candy he bought. <laughs> Vlad bought his favorite and his, his and his daughter's favorite candy. So, Gummy Bees candy. Um, I was gonna say really quick, Eve Killer, I wrote back to you. The problem is that story isn't confirmed. I don't really believe it yet. It might be real, but I don't believe it. Um, that video could be fake. Anybody can put music over a video. Um, it isn't reported anywhere legit, and that concerns me, right? It's possible nobody noticed, but I'm very surprised nobody noticed. You know, it's been weeks now. So I'm not convinced the story's real. It might be, but as I said, I'm not, I'm not totally convinced. So we shall see. Uh, in any case, um, there is no starting. Uh, that's not true. You have to go and look, and it'll, it'll tell. The starting bid, I think, for that is $40. And again, half the money goes back to Ukraine. Half the money goes to support my work because I do this show full time. Nobody pays me but you guys. So all of your gifts that I ask for, all of the memberships I ask because quite literally for the last two years now since the war started, I've been doing this full time and I've been able to survive and pay my bills because of your generosity. So thank you for that as part of, and I just, I felt, you know, it's funny when we started doing the auctions, I just felt weird doing the auctions and making money on stuff from Ukraine, you know, when they're at war. So I had decided I was going to give 50% of the money, which I have, uh, back to the Ukrainians, and we've been doing that from the beginning. So 50% goes to support my work, and 50% goes straight back to Ukraine to the various projects we've been doing. So, so anyway, so go check it out. The mods are quick. Oh, yeah, the mods have to be quick. Thank you, Tom. Oh, and don't forget to keep hitting the like button and the clicking, all that kind of stuff. on the, on the the uh, Follow me on YouTube, by the way. Follow me on TikTok. Uh, tap the screen on TikTok to get the likes going. Um, you guys on YouTube, I forget. Oh, you can hit the like button, I think. Thank you, Paulius. I appreciate the hearts. And who's that? Uh, oh, and Swan Person with the bunny ears. Thank you. Um, anyways, oh, you know, it is Good Friday for a lot of people because I've noticing traffic's a little lower today. But I, maybe the Good Friday thing because kind of a holiday-ish for people. I don't know. You know? Anyway. All right, guys. Um, let's, uh, let's do questions and everything else now. Thank you, Paulius, for the bracelet. So this is the part of the show that I have finished with the news, and now we talk. 
and I'll hang out for a good half hour, maybe longer, and we'll just talk about the news, whatever you guys want to, questions you've got. Um, I'm not really up on it, Magical. I don't know what the latest on that is. Yeah. Um, oop. Bethesda is slow today? I don't know what that means. Bethesda is a town right outside of uh, Washington, D.C. in Maryland. I know that. Um, thank you, Chazak, for Mr. For Mr. Orange. <laughs> um, uh, I can't imagine, for, I mean, Flying Medic, why would it? Flying Medic was saying, does the brown tan patch create any friendly fire incidents? I can't imagine. I mean, I guess, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Interesting question, actually. Now, there's an interesting question. Thank you, Sergeant Kabuto. That's an interesting question. If you have to wear some colors that identify you as Ukrainian versus Russian, wouldn't those colors already stand out? Like, why would, remember at some point the Ukrainians, I think, were wearing yellow or they were wearing blue. So why would a yellow thing on your arm not stand out, but a yellow patch here stand out? I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's a good question. I, I don't know. The military folks, now having said that, a lot of the military folks wear those things. So, you know, um, update from the Russian Revolution. Uh, no news on that. We don't have any news. Um, I assume you're talking about the, uh, the Russian, uh, what do they call them? There's three different Russian groups now. There's a Siberian group, Russian some, something, and basically the Russians that are fighting against Russians um, that the Ukrainians are helping, the sort of the soldiers. Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for the hearts. Um, no news, no news in the last few days. They've sort of gone off the radar. They held a press conference maybe a week ago in Ukraine and then in Kiev and then kind of dropped off the, the map. So, you know, Raphael, do I think the money is going to go through Congress for Ukraine? I'm not convinced. I don't know how he's going to do it. Trump has said no. Trump would have to say yes. Now, Trump did say one thing. Trump did say, like, was it a month or two ago? Trump said that, um, you know, aid to Ukraine might be okay if we just sent it as a loan. Now, I'm kind of, I will tell you this, maybe the Biden administration didn't want to send it as a loan, but I don't know why the Biden administration didn't turn around and say, great, $60 billion loan, here's the legislation, let's act, and watch Republicans in Congress go, eh. The other problem is, you know, the MAGA Republicans in Congress, a lot of them, like Marjorie Taylor Greene especially, have been threatening that if, if, if they spend any money on Ukraine, they'll bring the speaker down. It's very complicated, I've explained before, but because the Republicans in the House of Representatives have like a one vote majority, they can't afford for anybody to walk. And he could lose his speakership if anybody says, basically stands up and says, I want you to go on. So the Speaker Johnson has been very afraid of doing anything to piss off anybody. And it's basically made the House stop working in some ways, in many ways. So, you know, so I, I am I am not very hopeful. I think it is outrageous that the U.S. money to Ukraine has been cut off now for, what, probably six, five, six months. Um, and frankly, it's equally outrageous that the Biden administration is not talking about it. They clearly think that keeping it quiet is somehow going to, like, you know, they want to negotiate quietly with the Republicans and somehow that's going to help. Well, all it's really done is the American people have forgotten about Ukraine and they're not hearing about it, so they're assuming it doesn't matter. You don't. Republicans know this. Republicans know how to message. Democrats do not. Republicans, again and again, think of Donald Trump, again and again and again with the same talking points over it. He's got his, his names for Biden, his names for Hillary Clinton, again and again and again, over and over. Democrats literally are like, well, every two weeks or three weeks, we have Biden say something about Ukraine and that's enough. It's really not because the American people have moved on and Biden has let them move on. No, I think it, so. I am not convinced at all that there's going to be any money for Ukraine, to be honest. Let's see. Or, or at this point, it's going to be loans and it's going to be like one third. It'll be 20 million dollars, 20 billion instead of 60. No, this is very bad. Again, too. Also, to some degree, but you know what, too? To some degree, that's not really, that's not really the only problem. The only problem isn't just the U.S. sending more money, meaning more weapons. We've got to send the right weapons, right? Thank you, Jay Shea. Thank you, Emil. Uh, what was it? Oh, Emil. Emiliasso? Emiliasso. I've never seen that name before. Thank you, Jack. Oh, Jack Waldman. Thank you, Jack, for joining and renewing your subscription or joining us. Uh, thank you, Jay Shea. Um, right? I mean, Biden could give more money 
but Biden doesn't want to give them the weapons they need to win. I mean, there's a part of me that says, like, what's the point in even giving more aid if we don't want them to win? I mean, yes, it stops the Russians from overrunning them. Thank you, Stephen, which that's a good thing. But if we're not going to, like, help Ukraine win this war, why are we doing it, right? I mean, I really have to say that. And I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an argument that, frankly, and thank you, Sergeant Kalubo, Kabuto. I don't know if I thanked you for the, uh, the gift on YouTube. Um, it's a point that, frankly, the Republicans should make more often, which is you, wanna, you want us to send more money for a tie? You don't even want Ukraine to win. Like, right? Like, look at this whole issue of the, the attackums. We have some money left, we found. We're talking about sending attackums missiles. Biden will not send the missiles they need because they go too far and Russia will get angry. And he still hasn't decided on it. Well, right? Well, yeah, but the U.S. is going to get the money back tenfold, Yaroslav, because the U.S., because the Ukrainians have destroyed the Russian military. Um, that is an investment. The U.S. would gladly spend $100 billion to destroy the Russian military for the next 10 years. So um, it's money we got back tenfold. The amount of money we'd have to spend in our defense budget to take on Russia will be less these next 10 years because of what's happened in Ukraine. They put their lives on the line for it, and we put our money on the line for it. But it is an investment far worth it. We've already gotten our money back. The other issue is, guess where the money went? The money went to U.S. defense contractors. 90% of it went to Americans, to American businesses. So we already got the money back. <laughs> it literally was spent in America. In other words, your factory, your factory workers, people you know are the ones benefiting from the money. So, yeah, it already has come back to America, I would argue. Um, thank you for the hat there. Who is that, Scott? Thank you, Scott. Um, Jillian, I think by... Here's the problem. So Jillian says... Uh, surely Biden realizes the danger of a bigger war if Ukraine loses. Yes, that's why he wants a tie. Biden doesn't want Ukraine to lose because he realizes it's dangerous if Russia wins, there could be a bigger war, then moving on and attacking NATO. That's why he doesn't want Russia to win. But Biden is afraid that if Ukraine wins, if Ukraine kicks Russia out of the territories Russia is currently occupying, specifically Crimea in the south, the territory Russia stole in 2014. Biden's afraid that if Ukraine takes that territory back, Putin's going to go crazy and use his nuclear weapons. I, I mean, that's it. That is why, I guarantee you, that is why Biden is afraid. So Biden absolutely does not want Russia to win because it means Russia then might go on and invade the rest of NATO. But Biden doesn't want Ukraine to win either because he's afraid if that happens, the, you know, the Russians will use their nukes. So what happens? He wants a tie, and that's what he's been doing. He's giving Ukraine just enough weapons to basically kind of hold even with the Russians, but not win. And frankly, the same thing happened with the counteroffensive. It was a crime what we did with that counteroffensive. We gave Ukraine a ton of weapons knowing that they wouldn't win. We knew they wouldn't win. We knew it. Oh, we all hoped they'd win, but honestly, the hope was garbage. It was, it was a pipe dream. We knew they weren't going to win. Every military expert out there told us and said, no one in the history of the world has won a war like this without air, in a modern world without air power. And Ukraine doesn't have the air power they need. And they need, they need our fighter jets. They need other you know, A-10s, other, other planes, etc. cetera, to, to win the counteroffensive. They can't do it without aviation. And what happened? They couldn't do it without aviation. So, you know. Anyway, Jillian, that's why I get upset about this, because that's why I say Biden absolutely wants to stop Russia from winning. But he absolutely wants to stop Ukraine from winning, too, because he's afraid what Putin will do. And I think that's BS, because you know what? You tell Putin. You tell Putin that if he uses nuclear weapons, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. And you let him know. And you make clear that X, Y, and Z is something catastrophic that he would never want to have happen. And that's how you stop him from using nukes. The best way to get him to use nukes is to show that you're afraid. Right. To show that you're afraid of him. And that because if you're afraid of him, then he goes, you know what? Maybe I can get away with it. You know, so anyway, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, that too, Frank, I was censoring myself because of our overlords. I didn't want to say our overlords take sentences out of context. And that's how you get banned for a week, I found. So I don't want to say things that they would take out of context. And if I said what the U.S. should do in response, what Biden should say, they would quote me saying the U.S. should do X to Russia, right? So I have to censor myself. 
because that's how this works. <laughs> um, the mug came from uh, Vlad. My friend Vlad in Ukraine bought it. Oh, not this mug. This mug. This mug was made by Rowan, one of our one of our people, at one of our viewers, longtime viewer, supporter. Her daughter made this one because she made the design in her graphics class. Her thirteen year old daughter. But the other mug that I'm auctioning, this one Vlad got in Ukraine and shipped to me. I just got it like, you know, about a week ago. Actually, I got another shipment of cool stuff that Vlad. Actually, I got, ooh, I got a shipment of new stuff that Vlad sent. I'm not going to go through the whole box. I will show you the one thing. I saw this. I saw this and I told Vlad, I said, how did you not get me a, this is for other auctions in the future. Probably next week I might, well, We've got to see how I do it because I'm going to Asia in two weeks. So I might put an auction up next week. I'm doing one now, but an auction up next week that I don't fulfill until I'm back from Asia in two weeks because, right, I may not have time. Vlad sent me a box of really cool stuff today. Included was this. I saw this and I immediately wrote him and said, oh my God, you should have sent me a box of just this. Look at this t-shirt that Vlad sent me from Ukraine. Actually, I don't know if you can see. It may not be, it may be reflect. Oh, no, you can see it. It's not reflecting too much. Is that wild? Now, how about this? Is that insane? It's Baby Yoda wearing the Ukrainian logo, the Ukrainian patch. I mean, is that freaking, I was like, oh my God. I saw this, I was like, Vlad, you need to get me one and then you need to buy like 10 of them or 20 of them. Um, he sent a lot of other cool stuff too. But is that totally cool? Yeah, yeah. So I'll be, I may be auctioning that one off next week, knowing that it won't be shipped for two weeks. Um, the show is going to be, who knows what's going to happen for the two weeks that I'm in Asia. It's going to be very hard to do the show because I'm going to be in Singapore and Indonesia and they are 12 hours ahead of Washington, which means, for example, when I'm there, like the U.S. is asleep. <laughs> So if I did a show at, I mean, at nighttime, yeah, so Athena, it's, and I'm going to be there pretty much on vacation in a way. I mean, my nephew's getting married, so I decided to go for two weeks because he's doing sort of a whole thing we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to be on vacation, so I think I'm going to drop in. I think I'm going to drop in. Thank you, Nicholas. I think I'm going to drop in and do lives with you guys, but hangout lives, not probably official stuff because I don't think I can keep up on the news well enough. So we'll see, but I, I doubt I'm going to have the ability to, even the hangouts are going to be weird because I could do a hangout in the morning, but it'll be 10 a.m., which is 10, which will be 7 to 10 p.m. in America, and it'll be overnight in Europe. <laughs> you get it. It's going to be, we're, we're going to try. We're going to try. Um, U.S. needs China more than China needs the U.S.? I don't know. I'd have to hear why, Aaron. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, the U.S. relies on China for a lot of cheap goods in our economy, but China relies on the U.S. as a big market as well. We're a market of 330 million and we're a, a rich market, so to speak. We're a country that has a lot of wealth and therefore buys a lot of things. So I'm, I'm not I don't I don't think so. I don't know. I'd have to hear. I mean, it's possible. I'd have to hear the argument, though, on why why one country is more important to the other. Now, China, you know. China is worried about keeping good relations with the European Union as well because the European Union is around the size that we are, you know. But thank you, Swan Person, for the Easter greetings. My Easter isn't until May 5th, but thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Um, you know, that's what I'm going to do, Gunther. I'm going to do hangouts intermittently. Yeah, big stories. That's not a bad idea. If there's a big story, I could always do a quick hangout like that. Thank you, Frank. I could see about doing like a quick, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute hangout if there's like a big story in the news because we could talk about that. And at least I'm going to and honestly, I'm going to do some tourism stuff, too, probably if I'm able to go live. Let's see if I can. But if I'm able to go live there on my phone, I'm going to buy a cell plan. You know, let's see how I just don't know what the bandwidth is like. I have no idea what the bandwidth is like, you know, on my cell using it, you know, using um. Using it to stream, I just don't know if it would just eat up my plan like that. I'm a little afraid it might. There must be, I wonder if there's an app on the phone to tra Actually, I think my, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember if the iPhone, for example, has like an app or something for, for being able to track how much of your bandwidth you're using. You know, I used to, there used to be an app for stuff. There must be. 
There must be. Anyway, I want to test it out so I don't completely destroy my uh, <laughs> my cell phone <laughs> plan when I'm over there. Um, yeah, well, that's true too. Well, the TikTok feed. Yeah, I'm not, I think the TikTok feed itself. I'm gonna do. Um, I'll do. I will do like travel videos. Is what I think I'm gonna do. You know, now I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna take a break because I, I don't take vacations ever. But the first vacation in I don't know how many years was when I was in Arizona over Christmas and I got sick, of course, which was great. But um, but I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, I haven't taken a vacation. I couldn't tell you the previous vacation I ever took that I wasn't working during it. I can't even think of 10, 20 years. I don't even know. So 20 years is sort of the, what I can think of, of a real vacation I took. Um, do I think all these events are leading up to something big? I'm not sure what you mean. What do you mean, Nameless? What, like what events? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, like something in Ukraine, something in Asia, something in Europe. What events? Or do you mean like war in Ukraine, war in the Middle East, stuff like that? Kind of like so many bad things happening around the world. But even in that case... I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think they lead to something big necessarily, you know, um, that may be the, I'm going to write this down, uh, Karukuk, Eralo. There is a, um, site my nephew gave me to look for, I'm curious here to see if I can see it handy just for fun, but he had given me a site to do like it to buy an e-sim and i have to yeah this is the, let me just look really quick it might be the same company i don't know if it is arolo that's the one that's the one he gave me that's very funny that is literally the link he gave me was for arolo the one you just said yep that's the one i'm gonna that, that's what i mean i'm gonna buy an e-sim correct correct yep a screenshot for me uh-oh what did i miss did i miss some ah did i miss a gift don't tell me i missed something thank you mary by the way for the rose Oop, did I miss something? What did I miss? Or, or Karakuk? Anyway, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to use them and get up. The only thing is, I don't know what kind of a plan to get because I don't know if I stream what. Now, actually, having said that, there will be internet at the place I'm staying. I'm staying like in a bungalow kind of thing. They'll have internet, so I'll use that. Um, Athena says she thinks there's a huge attack coming. Are you in Ukraine? Are they? Are the planes in the air, basically? Let me look on Twitter because I've got a lot of um, one hour over streaming will be at least a gig an hour. Ooh, oh, that's bad, Rukinator. OK, that's very bad. OK. Um, interesting. Interesting. OK, I will have to see. I mean, I can always buy a larger plan just in case because I'm not going to be streaming for hours every day. Right. Right. I can look. Oh, are they something? Because well, I looked at the Asia plan before and it was a good plan. I just need to check it out. Um, to find out your amount, select settings, cellular to see the amounts. Really? Okay. I'm gonna, I'll look after the show. Thanks, Magical. Um, yeah, and I'll look at what the unlimited plans are and stuff like that. So, how oh, Callum is sending me stuff. So, um, yeah, high definition, uh, 720p uses up to a gig an hour. Full HD uses up to three gigs an hour. Wow. Wow. See, what I'm worried about, too, with that is I don't want to, like, use up all my Internet in the house. Could you imagine if I end up using all the Internet? Although I'm not going to be streaming every day. I can't. I mean, I'm going to be on vacation. So now I'll be I'll be checking in. But my guess is morning coffee. I'll probably hold with you guys. Show you the pool. <laughs> show the hamster. What should we? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> I like it when it catches my giggle. That's the best part. It goes, he, 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 he. Um, Well, I'm going to Singapore and to Bali. Can you set your display on TikTok Live? You can on your phone before you start, I believe. Or I, I remember there being a setting on my phone that I was able to pick the quality because I had to lower the quality. I don't know if I can do it once I'm live. I have to, I have to look into it and see. But I could, I could potentially, you know, do a, a, a lesser thing. You know, I could potentially do a lesser, uh, a lesser band, a, a lesser resolution, but you want to be careful with that, you know? Thank you, Mario. Because you don't want to put something too bad out there because then TikTok doesn't share it. But you know what? If I'm doing it for you guys, then we don't worry about the larger viewership, right? You know? 
Um, I'm leaving around the 12th of April and then going for two weeks. So, well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking at the very least, that's what I'm thinking. TikToks, exactly. TikTok videos and short, short YouTube videos just to show you what's going on and what I'm doing, I think would be fun. TikTok makes it a little easier because TikTok lets you record a video and save it. YouTube, I don't think they do unless I maybe can record a video and upload it. Maybe I'll do that on YouTube as shorts, right? Stop lying. Antanas, I hope you're saying that as a joke because you're about to get banned for being, oh my God, literally, guys, another troll who just did it. Stop lying, they wrote, exclamation point, all caps. I'm talking about being in Bali and that I'm thinking of doing some videos, tourism videos for you. And the person wrote, stop lying. <laughs> I, I just, I like it when I'm right. Put it that way, right? I told you, they get talking points. The Russian trolls get talking points and they don't actually speak English. They don't actually follow what's going on with the show. They just come in and they write stuff that, that they don't know what they're saying. But I mean, it's not just stop telling the truth. I'm literally, I'm literally talking about doing travel videos and that's what the person said stop lying about. They don't, they don't even know what they're doing. Russia is not sending us their best and brightest trolls, I must say. Thank you, Jeremy, for the heart. I did see that. I was in the middle of a roll. Um, I just love that. Stop lying. Oh, my God. So, yes, I will do, uh, I'll do short videos at the very least. I don't, want you, I, don't, I don't want everybody to get jealous, you know, but, um, but I will be doing short videos. Thank you, Mark, for the bunny ears. Um, oh, I'm warning everybody else, though, you're going to get muted if you stay stop lying now. Yeah. I, I, so I don't know whether Cody and Ken meant it as a joke or not. Uh, I would not block somebody. I would not block him, Ash, because that person might have been joking. I'd be a little, I would, I would, I might mute him for five minutes, but that person could have been joking only because we're talking about it. So I'd be a little careful with that one. Um, you know, okay. I'm just, okay. From here on out, just so I know folks, you're all going to get muted. Anybody who says this because you, it looks like you are trolls. Yeah, anybody else now, just mute them. Just mute them for now. Um, but I'm going to warn anybody else. You're going to get blocked from here on out if you write that because now we know you're not joking because I've told you not to. Thank you, Timothy. I will also say this. You're not being a very good troll if that's all you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I, what, you know what I mean? Like, you'd think, you'd think the Russians could at least afford trolls. Thank you, Timothy, and thank you, Robert, with the diny. Could afford trolls that would at least make an argument that you'd go, oh my God, that's a good argument. How do I defend Ukraine, right? But not like, stop lying. I just don't understand. I, I, honestly, I think part of it, I think it, it, when you think of also Putin, everything with Putin is psychological. I've told you this. He's former KGB. Everything is psychological warfare. Everything is psychological warfare. You know, very important, very important. Um, They're always trying to mess with your head. And I told you, remember my friend Mary and I told you she was, um, oh, thank you, Vicky. Uh, she was uh, working with USIA, US Information Agency in the Soviet Union for like eight months on a tour showing like showcasing US commerce, uh, computers, things like this, like laptop computers to the Russians. And she was warned that the KGB people would come in the audience. It was like a big uh, agricultural fair audience or something that the KGB guys would come in the audience and they would try to just confuse you. And she said they would come and they, they were warned. I mean, her, her people were warned. I'm adjusting my lighting here. And she said she remembers one guy. I don't think Marion's with us with us today. One guy in the audience. She was like, explaining the computer or whatever it is she was demonstrating to the Soviets, the Russian citizens. And the guy in the audience goes, I have a question. She goes, yeah. He goes, do you see the same moon in America that we see in Russia? Thank you, Vicky. And I asked her and I think I asked her, Mary, I said, why would why would like th this was, you know, a Russian troll, basically, except it was a KGB troll before there was Internet. I said, why would he ask something like that? And she said, they just want to mess you up. You know, you're before an audience, you're nervous, you're trying to get something done, you know, and you're trying to make sure you can say in Russian all the right words, especially in a foreign language. And they just want to throw something, a curveball, a crazy thing at you just to confuse you and make you forget what you're talking about. Like it's, it's just trying to shock you. And, 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 but I still think you're lying isn't quite, 
maybe because also in English, it just doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't resonate in English. I think it may resonate better in other languages too. You know what I mean? Like you're lying. It just doesn't, in English, it sounds kind of funny to come in a form and write that. It just, am I right? It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't resonate, you know? Anyway. Oh, well. You're lying. <laughs> it would even, I forgot that when my voice goes higher, his voice goes higher. <laughs> it's okay, Owen. Exactly. You got to let people know you're joking. Anyway, middle schoolers use the same tactics. Seriously, though, it's a weird, it's, it's, it's weird. Anyway, Nicholas, thank you for the cheer you up. Oh, my. Susan, I'm in a medical field, not military. How many countries in NATO? Um, uh, 32 now with Sweden and Finland. And is Switzerland? No, no. Switzerland is uh, non-aligned or independent or whatever word you want to use. Um, but, you know, Switzerland is always in a weird position because obviously Switzerland is on our side. You know, Switzerland's part of the West. But, you know, kind of like Ireland, you know, they're, you know, sort of constitute, I believe, I'm sure it's constitutionally in, in uh, Switzerland as well. They're sort of constitutionally uh, uh, non-aligned. So yeah, they're, they're not a member. Neutral, that's the word. Thank you. I knew I was looking for the word here. Neutral was the word I was looking for. Jackie just said it. Yep. And thank you, Bellin, for the sweets and Jen for the heart puff and Vicky for the rose. Keep the gifts coming, guys. I appreciate them. Thank you. Um, do I think the West is God of Earth? Yeah. I do in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been to Asia though. Asia's pretty cool. Latin America's pretty cool. I've been to cool places in Africa, but you know what? Growing up in America, got to tell you, I've had a lot of th good things in life because of growing up in this country and having American citizenship, growing up in a country with a good economy, you know, relatively safe politics until now. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Europe, my God. I mean, the, the, the culture and beauty and food of Europe, oh my God. And again, the freedom, the political stability, you can't say that in a lot of places on earth. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Jen. So yeah, again, the lawyer's conundrum or the lawyer warning. Thank you, Jackie. The lawyer's warning, don't ever ask a question you don't know the answer to because you're not going to, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Bellin. Thank you, Jackie. You're never going to embarrass a Westerner by saying, you think the West is so great. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, you're French, but you moved to the U.S. Yeah, but that's still the same thing. It's still the West. I do love France too, though. Thank you, Jedrick. Thank you, Daddy. Um, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean other places aren't cool too, though. Like I said, but but yeah, especially for, for democracy as well. Now, our democracy is in danger right now. Thank you, Sean. But democracy matters too. Knowing you're not going to get killed for your political beliefs, that's important. Thank you, Carol. All right? Knowing you have the freedom to like go and change jobs and do stuff. I mean, that I can speak out against my government and I've done it for years with impunity that my government isn't going to come after me, that no one's going to hurt me. That's huge. You can't get that in many parts of the world many parts of the world you can't do that so thank you timothy i would wager that the person who said that probably comes from a country where they couldn't do that where they couldn't speak out against their own government like we can thank you sean good chance good good percentage chance based on the you know population of the world and the various countries so yeah yeah i don't know if we're god's green earth but we're pretty damn good yeah yeah cute that they use the phrase too which also makes me wonder about being a, a spy or something. God's green earth is a weird expression. It's an old expression in America. Um, you know, a little weird. Anyway, uh, all right, guys, what else? We may, we may close up soon. I'll have a little bit more pasta left over from last night. Um, thank you, Bellin, for the rose. Uh, make sure to follow me. I always forget to ask people to follow, so do that as well. Remember tomorrow, well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm part boomer. <laughs> um, it is, but it's, but it's an old expression, God's great earth. What it makes me think is a lot of what happens with these guys is they study English, but they study a very old, like the Russians actually, a lot of the Russian trolls study this sort of very old English, meaning American English, I don't maybe British too, but they, they say expressions that sound like they come from the 1950s. Like I'll notice it and I'll be kind of like, 
And not necessarily the ones who come here, but the ones who come into the comments on TikTok, for example. They'll just be really weird old expressions that we don't say anymore. And it sounds like somebody has an ancient textbook that taught them the English, basically. Or the, oh, the movies. Now that's, there you go. I didn't even think of it. Cool, cool just said the movies. Right. They're probably, as part of the education, they're watching old movies to learn to speak and understand American, but they're literally like learning how to speak like cowboys from the 1950s movies. <laughs> right? Um, that's really funny. Yeah, don't take any wooden nickels, Fred. Exactly. I mean, we, I mean, oh my God. Oh, I didn't know they were having a no confidence vote on Mizotakis. Thank you, Levy. I'm assuming it's not going anywhere, or is it? Um, wheelhouse it's not yet yeah, now that's in your wheelhouse you're right, that's another old one yeah i use the ipad for my live it works very well thank you sean for the dino you know i love that one thank you um ipad works very well for tiktok live the iphone and the ipad um beautiful content i mean beautiful like the the visual of it is always very pretty um the iphone does a really good job with like the color and the lighting and everything it's it's very good um it's very good. And iPhone as well. Yeah, it's very, it really is. It's very, it's, it just works very well. Um, you know, for YouTube, everything was terrible until I used my iPhone. And now I use my iPhone on YouTube and the quality is like, yes, my quality has been terrible for two years on YouTube until literally like a couple of weeks ago, I think somebody said, what about using your iPhone? And I was like, I don't want to use my iPhone just because I didn't want to waste the battery. Thank you, Frank. Cause someday I'll have to pay a hundred bucks and get a new battery. But I was like, you know what, let me try. And the quality is so much better for the streaming on YouTube now that I'm like, okay, I'm using, now I use the iPhone. You know, what do you do? It's like I said, it's so much better quality. It's like the iPad. Yeah. Um, both are from China. Exactly. They are made in China, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Paul, supposedly Mitsotakis, who's the prime minister of Greece, Athena was saying he's facing a no confidence vote, but I don't know whether it's anything uh, significant or not. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm a little part boomer. I've got I've got some boomer in me. I'm between boomer and X, actually, which is kind of funny. I think boomer and X. Yeah, because I'm really not boomer, but but statistically, I probably am part at least. Thank you, G-Dub. Um, well, that's a good point, Marie. Now, in the past, I've traded them in because I got great trade. I got very good trade in value from them. I don't even remember what I got, but I, again, I was getting good trade in. So that's the only problem is potentially it would be nice to use for the videos because I plug it in and you don't have to worry about the battery. I'm not going to tell you how old are you? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how old I am, Colin. <laughs> um, um, uh, oh boy somebody yawn at you guys uh, rah, rah, rah. 39 you're younger than me <laughs> you're younger than me um, uh. anyway thank you like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> um, anyway all right, guys, um, I think we're going to call it quits. Let me, let me do the quick summary of the news. I'll go through the stories we covered tonight briefly, and then let's call it quits till tomorrow. I'm going to do the recap right now. Bingo. Um, and then remember tomorrow morning, so we've got our, our month, our monthly, our weekly coffee talk that I do on TikTok and YouTube for the paid monthly subscribers. So on TikTok, if you're a monthly subscriber, any of you with the SNN, um, just come and join us tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. If you're on YouTube, same thing, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S., any of the green people, um, Chris and Susan and Gunther and Mike and the rest of you, uh, join us. Please don't, you know, if you can, come by, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. I'll also be on Discord for you guys, but, you know, the YouTubers can just come to YouTube. Anybody else can come over to Discord if you're a, excuse me, if you are a Twitch, Discord, YouTube, or Kofi subscriber, come to Discord, join, you know, uh, become a member of my Discord, it's free, and then make sure you go to your settings on Discord and link the account where you subscribed. So link Discord, YouTube, Kofi, etc. You could link YouTube as well, frankly, but I figured out how to make it work on YouTube too, so we're good. Um, the Romper Room song, I know. Uh, I don't quite remember how the Romper Room song goes, though. Like, right? I don't remember the song. I don't remember the song. I remember her saying, I see so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, but I don't remember the song. I have to Google and 
Now you got me, although I'm a little afraid to pull it up on YouTube because YouTube gets weird. TikTok doesn't, man. Hi, okay, you're okay. Oh my God. I'm getting, she's literally sitting here waiting for me. Oh, wait, I'm trying to like move so you can see. Ah, I can't, I'm moving the wrong way. I don't know what I'm doing now. Ah, I'm trying to show you guys, but it's doing the opposite. There we go. It's doing the opposite of what I want. She was laying down and going, uh oh, now she's heading for the water bowl. This is dangerous. All right, we'll see. If she heads to the water bowl, I'm in trouble. All right, quick recap of the news. Um, overnight, Russia launched one of its biggest missile and drone attacks on Ukraine, again hitting energy infrastructure. Uh, the U.S. is reconsidering sending longer range attackums, which we have been refusing to send to date. But the chairman of the Joint Chiefs says maybe we will now. That's nice. Uh, Russian forces accidentally shot down their own Su-27 fighter jet over Ukraine, over occupied Ukraine. That's a $126 million plane, according to the Ukrainians. The transport of artillery shells for Ukraine through the Czech Republic is being organized right now, which is great. Uh, Belgium is sending another 100 million euros or 107 million in aid for basically servicing the F-16s. Okay, hold on. She wants some water. I'll give her the water quick and we'll continue. I did forget to put water in for her as we started the show. That's my mistake. So, all right, killer. I'm getting the water. I admit I screwed up. All right. That was bad. I was being bad. Oops. All right. A little bit more news. Um, Russia is still going after Ukraine's energy production, I mentioned. Um, it's been one year since the Russians uh, took Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich hostage. Thank you, Paul. Um, Romania says it found possible drone remains after uh, Russian drones were shot down over Ukraine. They found them on the Romanian soil. President Putin, oh, I mentioned that, that was a repeat. Um, and then the Taiwanese foreign minister warned that if the Russians are allowed to win in Ukraine, that this would send a message to China that the U.S. was not willing to stand up to China and Taiwan and therefore could make the Chinese much more likely to invade Taiwan. So very scary stuff. Thank you, r 19 that is it for the news. Thank you, James, for the rose and making sure I didn't miss anybody else recently here. Um, I think that's it. All right, guys. Um, have a good weekend. Have a happy Easter for those of you who are Christian and also not Orthodox. Um, it's not my Easter until May 5th. But um, I will... Your favorite Turkish actor? Who's that, you? <laughs> Maybe. I don't have a... Actually, I. you know who I... Is she Turkish or Persian, though? I think she's Turkish, though, isn't she? Maybe she's Persian. That woman, um, what's her name? She, I wonder if she is Persian. I always thought she was Turkish. She's wonderful. She was in The Expanse. You know who I mean, guys. What's her name? Remember, she was the, the world president in The Expanse? Um, but I always thought her name was Turkish, but now I'm wondering if she was Persian because she did a video about the Persian, uh, the Persian thing this week, whatever the... The thing is, I'm hoping somebody knows what I'm talking about and we'll Google before we sign off really quick. I can Google it, but I don't have, I don't like sort of pulling up on my, my screen when I'm doing this stuff. Um, she's very good though. She was in 24 as well. Um, but in uh, any case, she's very good. Do, do, if you like sci-fi, check out The Expanse. She's very good. All right, um, guys, otherwise see you tomorrow morning. Uh, monthly subscribe. Everybody else, I'll see you Monday. But for the monthly subscribers, TikTok, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S., YouTube, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S., and the rest of you on Discord, all right? All right, see you guys. Vlad may join us. It depends whether the Russians are bombing. Sadly, that's kind of how, how he decides if he can join us or not, but hopefully he'll join us for a little bit. All right, all right, see you guys. See you all. Have a good evening. Oop, I'm trying to pull. I always have to, like, pull my things here.